3 May 2022. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening depending on whatever time you watch my official YouTube channel. Subscribe and share the link to my official YouTube channel link for each of the videos that I have uploaded for my official YouTube channel because each video that I choose to create will go to my official YouTube channel in the time frame that I do so. Go to my website, www.susanmealing.com. So, I was born and raised in New Jersey in the 1980s. Grew up going to New York City, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Different areas of Pennsylvania, such as Lancaster, and then New York State in different areas. So, um, <laughs> Those who don't know, especially in the state of Texas, because why would you know unless you ever actually went up to the New Jersey area or New York City area or Pittsburgh or Philadelphia area, um, or possibly certain areas in Washington state, mainly Seattle, <laughs> Um, and then a little bit in Portland, again, I'm going to guesstimate these areas as far as Oregon, and then certain areas in California. You have heard of these people. In the rest of the United States of America, you've only heard rumors. So let me tell you this story. Okay, but it's not a story because it's reality. There were these people. They were called yuppies. Usually these yuppies, at one point in time, were hippy-dippy types, okay? They would go out and do whatever sort of just sinful behavior. Anything and everything was essentially, you know, they to do LSD, they do angel hair or angel dust. They would do um, cocaine. They would do MMJ, but it was more recreational for those types, you know. And so I'll acknowledge for a while I haven't had my MMJ. And so, you know, as far as my headaches and migraines, I've been doing what I could because, you know, there are these hippie yuppies that I met in the state of Texas in the time frame of 2009 through 2012, okay? These people from 2000 through that point in time knew that I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, knew that I delivered two children after waking up from my coma within literally two years while having a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that took eight and a half years to dissipate. I was on prescriptions that were not FDA approved for a minimum of four years before they were approved. So for those who would research this, I was on Maxalt in 2000. I was on Imitrex in 2000. I was on Depakote in 2000. I was on uh, lithium because of my headaches and migraines. I was on Wellbutrin in 2000. I was on Paxil, um, Fioraset in the year, years of, to about 2005. For those who know, um, what is it? Uh, there's a, something that starts with a T. There's something that starts with a C. You know, all of the colazepam. That's right. That's the another one. I was on colazepam. Mm -hmm. All before it was ever FDA approved. So in 2005, okay, I was introduced to MMJ. And I did not want scrambled egg brains because at that time, 
I had already woken up from my coma. It had been about, it was 2004, 2000, no, I think it was 2005. 2005, and I'm just like, no, I have scrambled egg brains because I was in a coma. This is verbatim what I told people because I had no better words and I could just remember the commercial with scrambled egg brains. And since I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, um, if you've ever made scrambled eggs and then added a liquid like Tabasco sauce or whatever, like, that's pretty much what it would look like. <laughs> and so I had scrambled egg brains. Because I was in a coma for a while and I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that took eight and a half years to dissipate. And yet they were like, well, here's Max Salt. You know, it won't be, you know, FDA approved until like 2004, 2005 in the tracks. Here you go. Yeah, no, 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 no. We'll give you all three types of Max Salt, by the way. We'll give you the regular pill. We'll give you the dissolvable under your tongue. And we'll give you the injectable type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, why not? It's the Army and the Air Force. Mm-hmm. They gave me lithium. Mm-hmm. I had oxycodone, uh, Percocet. What was the other one? Hydrocodone. I, they, they both. I have both. Prescribed at the same time. You know what? By the time of the year, in 2009, for some reason, the doctors were like, you know what? You developed ulcers. <laughs> Let's give you some Nexium. Yeah, for some, un, uh, some odd reason, all these prescriptions that, remember, I was dealing with memory deficits and cognitive disorders too. You know what? Some of these prescriptions you were on kinda ate away your stomach lining. So here's what we're gonna do. By the way, you also have ulcers at that point in time. So here's some Nexium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Make sure. <laughs> These are doctors. Medical doctors who have, you know, degrees. Mm-hmm. Yes. So in 2005, I get introduced to MMJ and I and and I can I acknowledged this before. I'll acknowledge this again. So, and I put this in right, I acknowledge it. So I am given a jar. So those who have been in Washington State, you know what the average size jar is, okay? This was a lab in U-T-S-C-H-S-A or however the letters of whatever. I'm given this jar and I look at it and I'm like, well, what is it? <laughs> this is not a prescription. <laughs> These are, these are weird looking, I don't know what. Now here's the irony, yes, I was born and raised in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And while I have made fun of my biological mother, she went to college at Rutgers University in the 1960s and 1970s. In comparison, in the 1980s and 1990s, I was not allowed to watch anything above a G-rated movie in the 1980s and 1990s. I, I'm just saying, so, you know, the first time I ever heard of a dime bag was ironically at a seminary college for my grandmother's graduation. Mm -hmm. My biological mother's sister, Chris, her daughter was buying a dime bag, which I didn't know what it was. I didn't look at it, it was weird. I, you know, it was just, there were other things that were going on and it was just, hey, I'm gonna go this way. Because I have artwork to create. Mm -hmm. And I am going to go and do all this other stuff. Cause, ew. <laughs> I was that child. My biological mother was a deacon, my biological father was a trustee, and I actually believed all this sort of stuff, you know, but then there's also, I spent time with General George Washington Spirit without prescriptions, okay? So I actually had this site, I still have the site, it is what it is, and so I, I, I acknowledged having had nightmares and prophesying as a child. This is nothing new for me, okay? Before prescriptions, Again, my verifications through my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. And I was 
you know, for those who have read Finding a Silver Lining and Finding the Silver Lining, as well as some of my FetLife posts, I had some MMJ, okay? Now, from the time frame of 2018 through 2022, is there anybody who can tell a difference about my attitude? You know, from my headache and migraine pain? Is there any difference whatsoever? I'm sure maybe some people could possibly think of a little bit of an attitude that I could have. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have that much of an attitude, but I acknowledge I can be biased. I do have an attitude, I do acknowledge it, though in my defense, I'm also dealing with everything all at once, as I was before, though I may have been calmer with my words, hypothetically, okay? Now, in these years of 2000 through 2012, all of these prescriptions keep piling up the individuals I knew, with the exception of two males, had recommended me to get more prescriptions. Okay, I didn't like taking them. Half the time I forgot to take them anyway, though I had MMJ. You keep that in mind. I usually forgot to take my prescriptions. I'm going to guesstimate the individuals that told me to get more prescriptions. Well, that would make sense as to where they went. <laughs> in comparison, yes, mm -hmm, to the MMJ. You can decide whether or not you like my words. Mm -hmm. So I did that on my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on purpose. Because I'm going to guesstimate those who read Finding a Silver Lining and Finding the Silver Lining through some titty baby temper tantrums. Oh no, here's some yuppies, here's some yuppies. Oh no, here's some 1980s, 1990s yuppies. Here we go. Because you know what? The 1980s, 1990s yuppies were usually rats. Mm hmm. Hypocritical rats, too. They weren't ever anybody that was ever innocent. No, 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 no. A lot of those rats from the 90s, especially the late 1980s into the 1990s, were yuppies. Huge yuppies. So, what is a yuppie? Usually in reference to a male. It's a male who is egotistical and arrogant, who doesn't like if another male does more than him or if a female is capable to achieve more, has far a larger amount of achievements and throws a titty baby temper tantrum and rats because he doesn't get his way, usually in certain references huge rat. Females are usually feminazis who are jealous and envious that they can't come anywhere near close to what either side. So they're feminazis where they think that they should be treated as equal as males and then they go and try stomping on other females because they've achieved far more than they will ever be capable to by the time they become a rat. Mm -hmm. They're yuppies. The irony, you would think a yuppie would only be in business. Oh no. Oh no. The most amount of yuppies were actually heathenic. And when I say heathenic, they would try to portray that they were some holier than thou, that they had morals and ethics, and yet they were ho. So either they had numbers of dicks that they sat on where they could take Sonic the Hedgehog, like a real hedgehog though named Sonic, mix it with a porcupine and that isn't even a quarter of the amount of dicks they sat on, okay? So let me just be clear on that. And then those were the ones not forgetting, of course, the escort versions of. Mm-hmm. Talk about rat of rats.
Mm hmm. Couldn't fucking handle a female who could actually accomplish anything. And usually they were doing it too when it came to different whatevers. So if in regards of what was MM and is MMJ to me, those types would lose it. Mm-hmm. Because the second whether a male that with the female was being a feminazi towards, because how dare you be a man? Mm-hmm. And whether or not to another female, just how dare you actually achieve something? Mm-hmm. Would be doing the exact same thing or harder drugs. You know, whether it was cocaine or LSD or whatever of whatever. They were huge rats. Just massively huge. Yuppies, but rats. There weren't ever any yuppies that weren't rats. Because they'd go, yup, 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 and then they'd go tattletale. By name. Wouldn't ever be discreet. By name, just a rat. They had businesses. They had different whatever. And they do it themselves, but they were rats. Or, 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 if they had a spouse, their spouse could do it. But if they didn't get something they wanted, I'll reference Taco Cabana in 2012. Rats. Mm hmm. Yup, yup, yup. Now I'm gonna go do this. Yup, yup. By the way, never mind. Megan Estes smoked with me. Mm hmm. Joseph Estes, rat, I'm gonna guesstimate. Mm -hmm. Then there's the stuff as far as Alan is concerned and that situation on FetLife caught me after, after the situation of a few things before that FetLife discussion as far as that was concerned, okay? Mike gave me permission to go out front because of a situation regarding my headache pain spiking to a migraine. Alan came out front, started yelling while I'm dealing with the pain level. I had go grab one of my pills because my pain level was that bad. So I had my emergency pills. And so instead of having a few puffs, then what happened? Okay. So what's the problem when it comes to the difference? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is a yuppie. That's a yuppie. Doesn't matter the background. Could be whatever of whatever and a yuppie. Mm-hmm. Because 1980s, 1990s version. Granted, that was 2012. But you know, below the Mason-Dixon line in the Midwest area, obviously different. Now remember, by the time of 2012, I landed at the bottom of the ocean in a few locations, found some forming underwater volcanoes, handled business, keeping the whole East Coastline safe and all, took care of the stuff as far as the Gulf of Mexico, and landed at the bottom of the ocean and surfaced alive, obviously, multiple times in a week consecutively or a few days shy of a full seven days, as well as cleared out all the waters in the state of Texas of that. Mm -hmm. Got all sorts of the endangered species up, lifted higher so that way they weren't in the endangered level and those aspects. Took care of business, earned 26 scuba diving certifications using a little bit of MMJ. But you know, those types, so Sean Leonard knew, please don't tell me a male who was, what, a teenager in the 1970s? Please, no different, and that's a techie yuppie rat in that capacity as to a hypothetical regarding any problem with my work at all. You can't have just anybody talking about my type of scuba diving and my work because you gotta be capable to prove it. And I have. 
because if you only do warm water scuba diving, please, if you haven't ever spent a lot of time out in the Atlantic area of the ocean each summer for a minimum of 10 years, you don't have, and you have to do certain things when it comes to that as well. It's not something like you just go out and stick your feet in the water. No, no, you got work to do. What is it that RuPaul says? I got a pop culture reference. Work, bitch, because well, uh, no, uh, 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 uh. So I dealt with in 2005, see this jar, and I'm like, mm mm, went to the toilet. I could kick my own ass for this, by the way, and I have. And so to put it in the toilet, flushed it. This is how against it I was before, you know, it took this many years. I did this, I don't know how many times. How many times? I don't know. Flushed it because I couldn't deal with it. It's like, nope, got scrambled egg brains, not gonna try it, not gonna do it. No, 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 no. I have all these prescriptions from these scientific doctors. Mm-hmm, have no idea that they're not even FDA approved at that point in time. So again, in 2005, I think I finally saw a commercial for Paxil. <laughs> and Wellbutrin was also another one. Mm -hmm. Just 2005 had been on it for about five years, but no, 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 no. It has just been recently approved. Oh, oh, just now. Wow, wow. I just still got that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, but wow just recently approved, got the little fine print in the bottom of the screen, approved in whatever year, please. So then, you know, fast forward as far as it took, I, I, I really don't even know. I think I have, a, I, I remember, I think about 10 of, let's see this, I can be mad at myself. I can, I'm very mad at myself. However, 10 of these charts, mm -hmm. flushed them down the toilet. So again, anybody who's upset about anything that I got to say, remember, I haven't had MMJ since 2019, officially. Mm-hmm. Don't be upset. Don't be complaining, especially after Iowa 2018 and my Medal of Honor Art Project trips. And what did I accomplish? So do not pretend anymore at all. You do not have the right at all to be upset in the slightest by my journal blog, The Ornery PSA. If you don't like it on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, if you were a yuppie rat about it, yeah, sure. It's Remember, it's legal in Washington, D.C., Think about that. You can buy MMJ, you know, where the law official elected individuals are. You can have both the MMJ and the recreational. But in the state of Texas, mm -hmm. so any of you who showed up in Washington state and or were in Washington state and wah, 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 ratting, in that regard, I was actually accomplishing what? I How many Medal of Honor project pieces I complete? How much pain was I dealing with as far as the altitude changes as well as the zapping? And how many books did I author and compile on my own? And what did you do in this lecture? You can think about whatever it is you accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just survived landing at the bottom of the ocean. What'd you do? As far as the year 2009? I mean, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications, landed at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, landed after landing at the bottom of Aquarina Hot Springs, you know, when it was deeper. Same thing as far as Clear Springs Scuba Park, you know, when it was deeper. Bottom of quarry in Huntsville, Texas. You know, probably-ish, maybe. 
uh, go to Eisenhower Park outside of San Antonio. Look at the death. That's the actualities of for those who might not want to actually accept. That's what you need to do. Then, yeah, no, 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 no. Then there's the Gulf of Mexico out from the other side of the Cozumel Island. Go and handle stuff, prevent a guy from dying after he caught a poofy fish. Oh, while keeping all those scuba divers safe, what did those people do when it came to me? Did any of those people actually assist me in the correct ways or were they little titty baby temper tantrum throwing rats? Because I wanted to go ice scuba diving at the northern part of Alaska during the Aurora Borealis to monitor and take scientific studies of the aquatic species. You know, after my son and my daughter were a certain age, but that would require those people to remember that. Because if they didn't remember after a certain age, because remember, I was invited to go take a swim or scuba around the Arizona because there were individuals who were concerned they couldn't get to that depth level and they knew that I was scuba diving as I had. This is before the Vandenberg, by the way. Shortly before. This is actually also before Cozumel. So I was actually invited. I said, well, you know, my son and my daughter, they're in elementary school and um, I can't do that because I need to make sure, well, you know, I'm just gonna say, excuse me. Um, I could have made arrangements for the summertime the following year instead of what occurred. Just gonna throw that out there. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then <laughs> in 2005, it literally took all the way until around the beginning of 2006 before I started to feel comfortable enough to try it. I had flushed, I don't even know how many that would be. I don't know. It was literally something like three, four of these jars a week. No, I have scrambled egg brains. No, absolutely not. And so finally, and then here's here, no, 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 so then, I have a little itty bitty glass, whatever. I, I don't know what it's called, so I put it in there. <laughs> this, this is this is this is me, <laughs> and I take a few puffs, and I notice that I actually feel better. My headaches not so bad. Then I remember I have scrambled egg braids. I was in a coma for a while. I had a subarachnoid, and at that time I have the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. No! Run over to the bathroom, flush it. That happened a few times more. So again, I, this is how bad my memory deficits and cognitive disorders were. So going back and forth in between this whole time, mm -hmm, several times just automatic after a little, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no, I had scrambled egg brains. I was afraid of messing that up worse. Completely forgot about the rave situation in Brackenridge. But nope, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, I have scrambled egg brains. <laughs> as far as that's concerned, let me go flush that down the toilet because mm -mm, no, no. So then finally, I take two puffs. Mm -hmm. This is, it, it, I, I acknowledge I was a smidgen slow after waking up from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then there was that. Mm-hmm. So it took me till about the end of 2006 before, oh, okay, maybe it might work. Maybe it's a possibility. I could give it a try. <laughs> I could possibly maybe see something worthwhile. And then I'd go and repeat that because I was afraid of my scrambled egg brains being made worse by 
by what is called MMJ. But let me go take these prescriptions of these other ones that haven't been FDA approved by that point in time. Because how would that be better? Because, you know, medical doctors, right? Oh, yeah, no. Or, <laughs> so fast forward situations in 2008. And, uh, and at that point, you know what? MMJ was great. It was perfect. It assisted me getting stuff taken care of. I handled everything that I did as best as I could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially when it came to CID in 2008. Yes. 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 I acknowledge that I, I did, but before I showed up, which I know by technicalities is not the smartest thing to acknowledge. However, when you take in consideration everything I was dealing with by myself at that point in time, give me a break. Just seriously. At that point, it's one of those, you know what you put me through. Do not pretend as though you're innocent, especially with knowing that I was taken off of it. Let me go over that. So people in the state of Texas, in San Antonio, Military City, USA, they know that I was 17 years old when I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 during basic training. They knew that I went to a rave to literally just dance. I was given, I don't know what, and I was told they were Advil. And then I was, and, the, and so I know the name Advil, okay. And, and they looked like the Advil had the candy coat. It had even the stamp in the center, okay. Then later, my headache, I didn't have words. So these purplish, Flintstone chewable flavor vitamin looking tulip shaped things. I was told that it was a chewable version of headache medication. So then I woke up in Brackenridge. Mm hmm. Yeah, it wasn't Advil and it wasn't a version of that at all. And so I had the blood test and all that and they found a lot. A lot, a lot. So I had an article 15 because, you know, I had the nerve to um, have underage alcohol, not even knowing that beer is considered alcohol while having a company commander named Captain Beer. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, not computing at all as to how that would ever be considered as. But, you know, I also wasn't given my meal card. And so, for those who know, as far as when you're stationed somewhere, I didn't have my meal card. And two males had realized I hadn't eaten since I had, well, not even when I arrived at medical hold unit. That's how backwards that was back then. It was two or three days. Didn't know where to go. I was 17 years old and had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. If there is any issue as far as me registering with the Library of Congress that I found out it actually worked while the United States of America's armed forces actually had the nerve to utilize prescription pharmaceuticals that were not approved for the general public, yet yeah, you can get over MMJ when it comes to me at that point. At that point, when I am 17 years old and the Army branch is utilizing non-FDA approved Maxalt, Imitrex, etc. No, I had morphine pills from the neurologist. No, I don't think so. You can remove that restriction because that is ridiculous. You know at 17 years old, while I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain and the Army branch and then later the Air Force branch, utilizing prescriptions, not one of them FDA approved, there is no excuse for any issues for my acknowledgement of MMJ actually assisting me at all. There is no excuse, no cause, no reason at all in any capacity because of those facts. From 2000 all the way through 2012, 
the majority of prescriptions that not just myself, my daughter as well, having been prescribed non-FDA approved, and that's in the civilian sector, by the way, if they're obviously, I mean, it was TRICARE. So let's pretend like, but not. So no, 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 no. The armed forces of the United States of America needs to stop being little yuppie whiny babies in those particular references because that is absolutely unacceptable. When you have active duty National Guard reservist and veteran soldiers on non-FDA approved prescriptions, there is no excuse for that. You have civilian sector going and doing drug trials on not even at the level to go and put into the armed forces of the, I, I, you can really just get behind the MMJ aspect, especially with everything that has gone on. There is no excuse. And if anybody is upset about my words, as far as my journal blog, the Ornery PSA on my website, www.susanmeebling.com and or my official YouTube videos for my official YouTube channel, you can get to step it. That's my opinion because there is no excuse. My pain levels and everything combined after how I wound up in Washington State, uh-uh, absolutely not. It wasn't until 2013, one individual was like, you know what, when you are taking your prescriptions, you're kind of a cunt. Oh, really? And he was frightened to tell me that. Mm -hmm. Then he said, when you have your MMJ, you're, you're so much kinder. Oh, well, I'll think about it. So you just take that in consideration. Each and every yuppie rat. You can think about that, you little feminazi whinies, mm -hmm. wearing your little one, onesie wetsuit sort of what have you, can't get anywhere close to what I personally did, can't even come close to accomplishing one hundredth of my own work, and yet you want to be whiny ass little what? I don't think so, at all whatsoever, mm-mm with some of the stuff that I have dealt with over the years and decades. That sort of stuff, I am very much clearly informing in that capacity. So I'm gonna get my coffee because, you know, just saying. And so then additionally, in those references, those types of individuals as to there is literally Washington DC. So where the Congress is, where the Senate is, where the White House is, there is MMJ. Excuse me, Pentagon, do you think you could get on board? Not to be rude. Just pointing that out there. Maybe, just maybe, Hey, FBI, here's a, here's a suggestion. You know all these civilians that have been tattletailing on the active duty National Guard reservists and veterans when they can't do even one hundredth of what they've accomplished because, you know, and then, you know, the, the irony of defund whatever, those people that, you know, in those capacities of what accomplishment levels? Yet they want to temper tantrum you about what what did they accomplish the oh because some active duty national guard reservist but most likely veteran hurt their feelings with words oh so sad wow so some civilian who didn't even have the internal strength and fortitude to sign the dotted line themselves in any capacity of law enforcement, fire department, EMS, military, they want to whine and complain about words. <laughs> oh, maybe nine out of ten complaints from, you know, those types that... <laughs> 
you wonder why males have become so feminized. Mm-hmm. Because you reward them that way. By going and causing a bunch of needless problems for the ones who are actually capable to protect and defend the United States of America and the world. You go and just think, those who complain to law enforcement that are civilians who they themselves haven't signed the dotted line but want to try whatever, you just think about that. Those who, those who are, oh, this veteran or this, usually whatever, they said words that hurt my feelings. Do you want them on the front line if something occurs with the formation of the United States Space Force? Is that what you want defending the United States of America? You just think about that Congress, Senate, and White House. Those types that go and complain. Mm-hmm. About sad mean what? Mm-hmm. You want those to assist with what? Do you, no, 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 just think. You've got SpaceX and Blue Origin. Do you want those who complain about words? Words. While claiming they're woke. You want those, so just envision, okay? Because you got the big blue book. Just imagine that actually occurs on U.S. soil. Do you want one of those handling business? Is that what you want them to do? do, do what do you think is going to happen to the human race? I'm just going to throw, you have those types? Excuse me, Homeland Security? Hi, these types that complain about wards? Mm hmm. What are they gonna do? Hmm? Hmm? I guarantee you something like Irving happens, they're just gonna crumble. Mm hmm. They're not gonna protect the human race or the United They won't even protect the city. They can't even do that. They can't, they, I mean, let's be honest on this. And then you have law enforcement handling business. You're okay with them having alcohol and doing what to their livers? But let's be honest on that. Think about that. Look at the backwardsness. And then how many types of rope that are made from hemp? You know, as many emissions issues as there are, what do plants do? Do plants assist cleaning up the atmosphere or something? Is there something they do? Is there so I'm not so, so there's hemp rope, correct? And it's pretty strong. Hmm. I wonder, is there something that could be said about something? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's like a common sense thing. Possibly. I don't know. You know, because then there's those little whiny, yuppie types, because, yeah, no, that was so mean. It was so, the words hurt my feelings. Look at what she wrote in her journal blog. Wah, wah, wah. Do you want them protecting? What do you think's gonna happen? What, just, 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 you know, cause, you know, just think, just think. Do you want that assisting? I mean, realistic, do you consider that assisting? Just think, just think, those types. She, there's this, there's this female, she wrote something online, and it makes sense, but she used me words that hurt my feelings. Yeah, let's have those transmissions go out to the space areas, space acts and blue origin, or, or maybe, just maybe, <laughs> Space Force guys, hypothetically those types, you know, here's your binky, go to your playpen, and when you can grow up and not be, you know, that, um, <laughs> maybe we can find some use for you, you know, when you grow up instead of having your little whiny temper tantrums, yeah, yeah, maybe we can take you out of your playpen to then bring you into the sandbox to see whether or not you can actually, you know, do something worthwhile. 
You know, I mean, what worthwhile have I done? I mean, I just survived a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. I survived that eight and a half year subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. I do deal with headaches and migraines since the year of 2000. So this is 2022. So, you know, it's chronic at that point, which maybe there's an irony about that. Maybe Snoop D O double G, you know, had something poignant. And then when the reality is regarding head injury after effects, please, as far as those prescriptions are concerned, especially the non-FDA approved ones, let's be realistic in this lecture here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. Let's go scramble up some brain some more and then wonder why that the society has all of these mental health issues because of whatever aspects of. Or, or, here's an idea, hypothetically, these plants, they do tend to help clear that ozone layer issue and maybe, just maybe, I don't know. You know, personally, I learned that sativa does far better than indica because I've learned that CBD from indica makes me angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my temper raises by a lot. And then, okay, maybe I can sleep only after I'm infuriating, infuriatingly enraged for longer than normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, THC as far as I learned what works best for me. So if that sort of stuff wasn't a needless problem for those types and staying out of my stuff, that would be great. If those types wouldn't be those types since I've already done the research three different times on myself, didn't need anybody else to get involved, I wouldn't ever approve of it because I've already done it myself. Yeah, yeah, so the first time I officially started testing myself was in 2011. Mm-hmm, I had a whole notebook of documents, made sure I knew exactly how many puffs and the differences of and what did and did not work. Second time was in 2013, as far as Portland, and then there was 2015. So I got it, all right? I don't need anybody's assistance in that regard, because let me guess, you would mess it up. You would think, to this, well, let's redo it. No, how about you just, then don't complain about my words. Don't complain about my attitude, because guess what? I already had everything squared away. I had everything taken care of myself. This is the problem with, oh, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. No, you're not. You're here to cause a bunch of needless drama. You're a yuppie. And you're most likely a Democrat and you cannot spell Democrat without rat. Mm-hmm. No, you can't. You can, just remember, you cannot spell Democrat without rat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many Democrats have ratted somebody else out, especially in the general public? Mm-hmm. I haven't named names until 2019. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't go into certain things. So, you know, maybe, just maybe, those types, male or female, that haven't done anything as far as actual accomplishments, except maybe they have a quantity number in comparison to quality, you know, in regards. And you know what? I do have a quantity number. I do. I have a few journal blogs that I've authored on my website, www.susanmeeling.com in the ornery PSA. Mm-hmm. And I've authored and compiled a few books. Mm-hmm. I, I have always been capable to distinguish between my fiction books and like some, hypothetically. And obviously, I've always known my fact books. 
I've created how many Medal of Honor art project pieces by myself. I've clarified and verified on top of those fact books. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, just maybe, oh, I also planned out my own Medal of Honor art project trips by myself. Did that all on my own. The only thing that I needed assistance with was adding the numbers together. That's it. So maybe, just maybe, hypothetically, individuals that decided to involve themselves when they were not invited should have not involved themselves without actually being invited and RSVPing to find out what you actually needed to do correctly by my standards because you know etiquette and respect unlike those stereotypical yuppies because the stereotypical yuppie only does that. They don't know how to have etiquette without being told what etiquette is. They don't know how to have respect because the stereotype of what they think their feelings have something to do with in comparison to what actual respect is. And yet at the exact same time, those yuppies go and stir up a bunch of needless drama because they have feelings that they think somebody cares about, which they want someone specific to care, and yet it just doesn't happen. And even if, you, because those are the types that any attention is good attention in comparison to accomplishing something worthwhile. Just created my own website on my own, did all sorts of whatever, what, have, what has ever been worthwhile recognizing correctly that I've done ever? Oh, you have issues with the MMJ? What have you accomplished? What length of time has it taken for me to go through all this sort of stuff? Hmm. Maybe if certain types of people you know, weren't so disrespectful because while they might think they're respectful, how much have I clarified and verified that they didn't know? They didn't ask either. So, you know, there is that, that requires that genuinity and truth. So those types, Maybe, just maybe, if I had actually been asked in truth in comparison of pretend little games that some had been. So there are those yuppies, apparently abundant. So here's that repetition of history. These yuppies did a lot of needless problems within their own communities. They cast out the only ones that had any common sense. And then when everything went the way it did and spiraled, then they wanted to try to blame the ones that they cast out for not staying around when it was them themselves who caused the problems to begin with. And if they had actually kept the ones that had common sense close by, they actually would have had assistance and could have real discussions. Thankfully, in the year of 2022, there's lectures that I can give. But that's not any discussions now, is it? So, in comparison to all those prescription drugs, you just go look at the side effects. That's all you have to do. And the true side effects, not the shortened, condensed ones. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have headache and migraine medication, that in the actual side effects, it says headache medication may cause headaches. Migraine medication may cause headaches and or migraines. That lets you know that's why it's called a medical practice. 
in comparison to healing medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, common sense. Wow, it's such a superpower. Hey, what happened in 2018? Because of what needless involvement from people I did not ask to be involved with my work? And what amount of finances did I pay? And what occurred that year because of all those altitude changes? You know, maybe, just maybe, I've always known myself in comparison to those people who have involved themselves needlessly and all they ever had to do was have etiquette and respect and actually ask me instead. But you know, those types, you know, the ones that whatever they think they are in comparison to my actual opinion. And then that etiquette and respect. I know, I didn't graduate basic training. Okay, uh, did you do even anything remotely close to what I took care of from 1984 through 1997 and then also in that reference of 1998, 1999, 2000. Did you do that? No, you didn't? Okay. So the Atlantic area of the ocean, you weren't taking care of that personally yourself without any actual assistance regarding certain problems. And then, you know, there's Grandpa Gavit. Mm-hmm and all that sort of stuff as far as, you know, big blue book apparently. That model home area in the backyard, the invitation to marine and science technology school with the Navy attachment, the coding that I was working on, what is it? Oh, oh, well in this lecture, since there's no discussions, it's just the facts I have to tell you, you know, in a lecture. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, I actually prefer discussions, but since there were all of these needless problems that occurred because some people had whatever feelings they thought mattered because of the lack of common sense regarding my actual work, similarly to scuba diving, how that went, how I earned 26 scuba diving certifications on my own, took care of all that by myself. Mm. And what did I accomplish in that year? And survive? Hmm. Just a forming underwater for volcano formation? What could ever be involved with that? What, what, what would that be? Of importance. Hmm. Hmm. It's almost as though I've, if like, for example, my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and ex-in-laws actually spoke the truth about me in comparison to wishing to involve themselves with what I have the right to tell them no to, because of the lack of interest from my point of view to them, because why would I care? Those people were okay with what they knew. Anybody else that would have happened to, what would have occurred if people actually cared about them in the correct capacity? I guarantee you, I've made attempts to actually take care of everything. What is, what have I actually had genuine assistance with in person, face to face, in person, on a continuous basis, knowing these facts in comparison to what I dealt with? Because I guarantee you, if my biological sister ever dealt with anything, in regards of what I have, I guarantee you Mike and Anna would have been there in a heartbeat in comparison. But I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. And they did what? They acknowledged to what? So those types of people have needed to stay out of my life officially since 1996. 
Once I was invited to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, officially they signed the paperwork where they were not a part of my life anymore. Officially, other than biologically, that was it. There is no need for them to get involved with anything of mine without my permission at all. That's not their freedom of choice. That's not their freedom of expression. That's not their constitutional right at all. As much as they might wish. Same thing when it comes to my ex-in-laws. That's the truth. So all this stuff was known from 2000 through 2008 by those people and multitudes of individuals throughout the city of San Antonio, including military. What is the problem in regards to MMJ in comparison to the hypocritical aspects of what I've dealt with? What's wrong with that picture? just from 2000 to 2008 as to what was considered allotted instead. What is humanity? What is compassion? What is common sense? Then there's 2009 through 2013. What is humanity? What is common sense? What is compassion? Oh, I got some tattoos because all the people that were in my son, my daughter, and my life were acknowledging that they were lying. As far as my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister, as well as ex-in-laws, while having the nerve to actually judge what would be in their closets to be concerned about in comparison. But they have, ye without sin, cast the first stone. Then there's the civilian recreational scuba diving group. Please. Please. I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. Which of my 26 scuba diving certifications, as far as the instructors, were actually certified in the specific categories of? the ones I earned. Sure, they were certified instructors. That does not change. What was the specific specialties of? Were they officially certified instructors for those specific specialties? If they were not, and all they did was essentially monitor and approve my certification, wouldn't that be a dual certification then? Wouldn't it be where each and every one of my scuba diving certifications would actually be because I actually, for each one that any of the scuba dive instructors were not certified to actually instruct, then they only had managed and watched to approve the fact that I was far more capable of and administered the written exams of which whatever ones and then whatever exams as far as the aquatic areas which then in turn would translate because I taught myself obviously would then for each one of my 26 scuba diving certifications of whichever ones that the instructors that verified that I was capable to graduate officially by every standard I should have the dual certification to be not only a specialty scuba diver for each one though also an instructor automatically for each and every specialty that whichever scuba diver instructor was not certified in those specialties beforehand. So in the year 2009, if they weren't certified in those specific cer scuba diving certifications that I earned, by all technicalities, I should have a scuba dive instructor card for each one of them by common sense standards, especially with the proven fact in regards of the dominant mentor program as to the amount of work that I did on my own. And here's a repetition of pattern of behavior in regards of Trimix as well as rebreather and ice scuba diving. In the dominant mentor program, I pulled myself 
out of certain electives before going into, and secondarily, there was the electrical one where the, the um, instructor and I agreed that that was not something that should be as far as the electrical aspects. I did not argue with, and I gave my valid points as to why I agreed to that. I already had earned whichever electives that I already had by that point, though I agreed because I was responsible enough to recognize by my own internal self-reflection and having the maturity and respect not only for the individual himself at his time, though also taking responsibility as to acknowledging the reality as far as what Geek Squad would know, among a few others. So there's realistically no excuse in reference to any of those scuba dive instructors that ever certified me for whichever scuba diving certification specialty that they themselves were not specialized in regarding actual instructor qualifications for those specific specialties in the year 2009, by whichever month, by official standards. It's common sense. How else did any of the PADI certifications begin? Same thing regarding any other scuba diving certification type. So there's no capability to actually deny that part, now is there? Each and every one, because of the way the specialties are and the origins in reference to scuba diving for each certification. And obviously I've been far more mature and responsible despite the situations I personally dealt with. Yes, my hair looks as I did have it styled. And what does my background prove? What has been clarified and verified that would be capable to those standards in comparison? What have I maintained and sustained responsibly despite other individuals thinking that they're good enough? How many by technicalities as far as lectures, though including in writing regarding my journal blog and my fact Facebooks, which legal could be considered as arguments as within the description of that would be clear enough to actually bring that forward? Are there enough legal arguments that I actually could have proposed in the aspects of that are actually capable to make enough sense despite how some individuals might not like the words of choice? in the hypotheticals thereof. The simple answer to that would be, if anything that I authored became enacted into a law, that was a starting point of, by technicalities. So, I have been willing to give credit where credit is due and recognition where recognition is due. I have had that clarity for quite some time. I've also been proven to be accurate in religious and spiritual aspects such as Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. And those factors, I gave warnings. Where have I given warnings that have been proven to be accurate? Which times? Since this is a lecture, whenever individuals listen and or watch, they can answer that for themselves.
add that hypothetical. Mm -hmm. And so just going to point those factors out. Mm -hmm. And so what tends to be the pattern of behavior that when I know what is best for me and then other individuals who are, I mean, if I actually had discussions with others, just imagine what that would actually translate to in comparison to being lectured. Mm. And then of course, those who in these hypotheticals of how many times have they failed? in comparison, and what did they prohibit that prevented progress in the correct capacities and in what amount of time? Hmm. Hmm. And, and what did they achieve in comparison? Sure, sure, they could have achieved a few things. So let's take the time frame of March 2020 to now, the 3rd of May 2022. What has been accomplished by each individual? I don't know in reference to this lecture regarding. For me though, from the time frame of March 2020, I had began my official YouTube channel around, I think it actually might have been in March or April. So there's that, there's that. Um, oh, I guess that's a two year at this point of my official YouTube channel. Oh, that's cool because I saw Greg Gutfeld had an anniversary. Well, happy anniversary, Greg Gutfeld show. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, even though, you know, it's, you know. Um, <laughs> That would be fun to be on his show. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of want to see if I can pick up Tyrus. I do. I kind of want to see if I can wrap my arms around him and pick him up off of the ground. Yeah, I kind of do. I'll even do it in heels. <laughs> I'll up the ante on that one, literally. to contact form on my website www.susanmuling.com <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. What is he? What he's, he's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a, I see, I, I'm equal opportunity. So what is he, uh, 315? Somewhere around there? Something like 315? Huh? <laughs> I bet I could. I bet I could. I bet I could. <laughs> You know, if his wife is okay with that, because I don't want to upset that. I know better. Happy wife, happy life. But I could pick him up. I, I bet I could. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I could, it, it could be like the Heimlich maneuver. That's all. That's okay. <laughs> Nonetheless, yeah, yeah. So thanks for the reminder, you know, YouTube channel official thing. And so, yeah, so there's that. However many official YouTube videos, lectures, <laughs> and stuff. Um, however many updated journal blog entries on my website, www.susanmeeling.com in the ornery PSA. Oh, I authored a few more books mm -hmm, for two of my fiction book series. I did do that. And, um, oh, I've, I've, um, hmm. oh, I've done a few, um, well, I've traveled a bit, taken a few pictures in reference to some stuff I noticed in the sky, mm -hmm. sang the national anthem a few times, mm -hmm. in a few locations, been to a few rallies as far as, you know, elected official stuff. Um, not in any offense, they were just loud and I was, you know, dealing with the residual zapping issue. So, but, oh, I did grow my hair back. It took a while because of the weight of my hair. So heavy. It is so heavy. My hair is so heavy. 
It really, I'm half Chinese, and I deal with headaches and migraines. Yeah, no, that's heavy. Yeah, yeah, this part right here is so heavy. And then, and then, I, oh, 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 I went out to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I tested my strength regarding that a few locations. So there's um, Kitty Hawk area. That was the first one during the Bethlehem Star in 2020. And then out at Virginia Beach in 2021-ish. And um, let's see where else. Oh, in 2022, well, there, I'm still processing that, you know, that probably is another issue from February, having seen the New York City evening skyline for the first time since 1998 from a location that I would recognize. Um, I acknowledge I also was watching a video footage earlier of the New York City area. Got a, I'll acknowledge I got a little... A little bit clumped for those who understand that. Mm -hmm. I got a little emotional. So, you know, recognized a few things. And that's in a different capacity because it's very difficult for me to actually believe that that's New York City. Because I know those buildings and what buildings should be there in comparison. And, uh, and I know what types were as to in comparison as well as the height. Um, so I'm, I'm, I am dealing with that, you know, that MMJ probably would be really good right about now um, as far as high THC capacity. However, you know, don't want to assume though I'm no better when it comes to the other stuff because I was informed that when I've uh, been prescribed certain types of anti-anger, it's the opposite effect. Yeah, yeah, I just get more angry. Mm-hmm. So, you know, common sense. Mm-hmm. This is why I uh, am very particular. And so this is additional reason why I didn't ever invite anybody. I specifically told this individual in Clackamas, Oregon, that I was not interested in being a guinea pig because I already dealt with it. So those types of medical, what have you, I was not willing to do so. It was only by my standards because I know what's best for me. Mm-hmm. And I was at the point in time, essentially, of my third round of testing regarding myself, because as I've explained in regards to the supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle, which obviously I would actually have to consent in comparison. And in order to consent, it's only through being informed officially in comparison because there's no other way to consent other than informed consent by my standards. So since I am as I am, if it's not informed consent, it translates to it not being informed consent. This is why I've also been honest because it's important where truth matters because you cannot deny not having been informed. Unlike some people, I am not ever going to not, ever, that, that non, whatever that was, that's nonsense is what it is. So only informed consent and not forced in that capacity because that's not consent at all, obviously. Right to choose in comparison to what some people think. You know, for example, if people actually had asked the one and only person to ask about my scuba diving, you didn't have the right to choose to ask anybody other than me about my scuba diving. It's literally called self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So I am the one and only self 
that you could have asked about myself and my scuba diving. That's it. You could verify it and, you know, that capacity, but as far as my scuba diving, as far as what myself I took care of and what myself I did, myself is the only one that you had to ask. As far as what I took care of myself in comparison. So then there's those situations regarding McCoy Elementary School. You know, they were, my son and my daughter were just minors in elementary school. That's all, you know, regarding those situations regarding my scuba diving as to that hypothetical of any involvement needlessly. And then if there's any proof regarding any needless problems to my elementary school aged son and daughter, there's no excuse regarding my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and or ex-in-laws to ever be involved regarding my work in any capacity of including my finances. Just for that additional clarification. Additionally, in regards to anybody else, um, there are those, well, what levels of what achievements of actuality because video games don't count. I know there are some who would like to consider video games as achievements in reference to what they, that's not an achievement. I don't consider that as a valid one. It has to be in real life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It does. So that requires the in-person, face-to-face, in-person, and no. Through the technology aspects of the little video game stuff, that doesn't count. Not in real life, especially in the civilian sector. So yeah, no, 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 no. So that's the, that's the facts. I mean, if you created something well good for you, however, that's not this, that, that is a, a problem now, isn't it? Regarding how have people actually been acting? Have they been more overtly too emotional about words because of those types of video games. Which is an irony when you think about it. Because if they're willing to do video games, or let's say they're willing to post things online and use whatever words, they don't have the right to be upset about me as a biological female using the words I choose or having the tone of voice I have, realistically. Because if they have done certain capacities of worse that would be found compared to me, who are they to judge me realistically? And it must be in truth because they cannot be hypocritical in their judgments because obviously they wouldn't be capable to actually judge. You can't have bias if you haven't acknowledged it. I have made sure to acknowledge my biases. as best as I could. But most importantly, I kept straight to the facts as best as I could, as much as possible. And that includes acknowledging my biases, acknowledging my emotions, and etc. I don't know whether or not other people have acknowledged their emotions compared to acknowledging their feelings, because feelings are different than emotions you know, by the definition, and then have they been capable to acknowledge the difference between their feelings and emotions and biases with the knowledge to distinguish the facts? Because while you can have emotions and feelings and biases in whichever combination or individual thereof, what the facts are that is different. So while yes, the facts are people can have emotions. The facts are people can have feelings. The facts are people can have biases. However, in regards to situations, it's only in reference to the facts, only the facts. And if you cannot distinguish between the facts and the facts as well to having emotions, 
the facts and the facts as well to having feelings, as well as and or the facts as well as the facts of the possibility of having biases. If that is not something that intellectually individuals in any capacity of have needed to actually have clarified, think about that. This is now 2022 and I have known that difference for decades, more than three decades to be clear. So I may not notice certain background aspects. I acknowledge that. That doesn't change the fact, however, that I do the best I can to actually have open discussions. I've made that attempt multiple times, but that requires a bit of maturity, I suppose, as well as etiquette and respect. So now at this point, yes, I have the lectures. That is what it is. Not my particular preference, though I suppose it's better than nothing, though then there's those factors. Mm -hmm. So, in reference to the MMJ, more specifically the THC, I would guesstimate that the time frame difference of my writings regarding my journal blogs as well as the comparison as far as the ordinary PSA on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. I would guesstimate you can distinguish the factor of 2015 through possibly 2016 or 2017 regarding my journal blogs. Uh, the updates officially began in 2019 for clarification. And so you have 2019 through 2022 for the non-MMJ situations, unless I specifically wrote about it, and it would be the specifics of the THC. Compared to 2014, 2015, I believe it was 2015, I created my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, through to, I think it's 2016, though it might be 2017, but in that edition of MMJ at random compared to that time frame, you have most specifically 2009-ish through 2016-2017 for the randomness of MMJ. Compared to my journal blog as to my updates without any MMJ regarding 2019 through 2022, individuals can take into consideration that amount of proof as to the clarity of, as well as punctuation to keep in mind because in the time frame of 2009 through 2013 mainly, there are the prescriptions mainly with the MMJ compared to 2013-ish through 2016-2017 without the prescriptions as much in comparison to take into consideration for those who thought I didn't know what I was doing and possibly the proof thereof as to always having known better. I know, I don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. I just earned 26 scuba diving certifications, created a few different research products projects in reference to breast cancer and cancer research from a T genome sequence of the dioxyribonucleic acid. Uh, I did attend college. It was just a community college, but that was before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, mm -hmm, where I was in college level AP geometry while taking college algebra with trigonometry and calculus uh, the following year, AP level. 
Mm -hmm. Though I do believe I had that particular college textbook sometime in first or second grade at Asher Holmes Elementary School, so, eh. Which was before I was invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. Because of course in Illinois, when that occurred, it was after I had been invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, and my ASVAB score of 93. In the year of 2000, my ASVAB score was a 98. So, you know. However, for those who have had issues understanding the difference between what I've been explained regarding neurology, well, when they have calculated what would be considered a second grade math, it's individualized. It's not in a communist way where it's everybody. No, 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 no. It's based on me individually to my standards from my educational background as a child all the way through before I had went into the army. So by my standards from my grades, from kindergarten through 12th grade and the little bit of Sun College, by the classes that I took, as well as my actual GPA, the Army and the Air Force rated me from my educational background in totality to second grade, compared to so while I understand there are some individuals that have had issues with certain things, my educational background might be different than yours. Mm -hmm. Like for example, having taken two and a half years of Greco-Roman Latin. And being in actual um, level three or level four Latin classes, when having been moved from New Jersey to Illinois because I skipped a level because of all of my prior education. Because, you know, so I, I tested in regards of level one and I was put in level two in my freshman year. So, you know, that might be important. I apologize, I forgot to bring that forward. I did skip a few grade aspects per because the teachers knew that I should have been in a further advanced class. So because of the needless problems from Mike and Anna, they subverted them by giving me higher education materials and testing me by those standards instead. Mm -hmm because they were annoyed with Mike and Anna in Asher Holmes Elementary School. Yeah, they, they, they didn't take kindly to how they wanted to try to hold me back when the um, different groups saw that I was far more capable than Mike and Anna were willing to accept because they didn't like how I was capable far more so. Here's the irony though, if they had let me go earlier, they could have spent more time educating Patricia instead of complaining about me. Just think of what they could have actually done instead if they didn't, you know, do that sort of stuff. Just think of where Patricia's education could have actually been if those people had let go sooner and I could have actually gone to just think. They could think about what Patricia could have actually been focused on instead. Mm -hmm. However, that was the choices that they wanted to make at those times. That's that yuppie mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is what it is.
Mm -hmm, yeah. And here's the additional irony. Patricia wouldn't have had me to complain about during any of those times. She would have had all of Mike and Anna's attention all those years if by the time I was in first grade, I had actually been let go to go do what I needed to go do. Education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead. However, that's the facts. So, all of the teachers, for example, Mrs. LaPiana, they did stuff, you know, because of noticing that I was far more advanced. And so because Mike and Anna were the way they were, as some in Illinois and Texas especially may have hypothetically learned, as well as possibly Washington State and East Coast areas. As to those particular factors, and so while they could have spent more time focusing on Patricia instead, you know, they, they, I mean, similar to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, where there wasn't a charge except for the uniform. That was it, because it's a charter school situation. Um, there were boarding schools that were willing to ignore the price if Mike and Anna had just let go sooner. So if they could just stop and let go in comparison and just move on. Same thing with Patricia and those types as far as the hypotheticals of whatever names up. So while I don't have, I, I do have the knowledge there are some people who think in whatever capacities, if you have certain personality traits similar to Mike and or Patricia and or Anna and or my ex-in-laws, that is those references. Because I may not know your specific name, but if it's the point in time where you just need to let it go, just let it go. Because I could have actually been doing stuff that would have been more important in comparison. And those credit and recognition in the correct way instead of that superficial, shallow way that has obviously proven itself in regards to Clear Spring Scuba Park depth level differences. In those hypotheticals, mm -hmm. as far as that proof. So I appreciate um, listening and watching. Make sure to like my official YouTube videos and share my links to my official YouTube videos. Subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. Those factors. And, um, you know, what's... Um, What's the difference regarding those time frames and the MMJ standards that would be completely open and capable to see? As far as the difference between CBD and THC for me, as far as my mood, I'm going to guesstimate possibly I was accurate regarding knowing myself and what works best. And with the proof that I have been prescribed different prescriptions that were not FDA approved at the time frames of while having a subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, how common sense would it be to continue in that capacity knowing specifically what works best for me now instead? Because of my right to choose. And since 45, President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, and his administration with Vice President of the United States of America, 47, 
Mike Pence and his administration had approved the right to try and certain references, then by technicalities, I already know what's best for me. And so that would automatically clear that needless problem in that hypothetical because that's my right to try, not other people. Because that right to try is for them, for themselves. Not when it comes to my stuff. Mm-hmm. Regards of my life and my work and stuff. Difference. to move along similarly, huh? So you guys have a good day. Again, today is the 3rd of May, 2022. Maybe that's some people's internal feelings. If you can pick up on that, as far as my accuracy levels, you guys have a good day. Remember, it's the 3rd of May, 2022.